Hello, my beautiful besties, and welcome to another reaction. Uh, I have for you today a song called Alice's Restaurant. Um, it's by uh, Alo Guthrie, and it was requested for by J.K. Clark. Let's go check it out. This song is called Alice's Restaurant. It's about Alice and the restaurant. But Alice's Restaurant is not the name of the restaurant. That's just the name of the song. And that's why I call the song Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Now it all started two Thanksgivings ago, it was on two years ago on Thanksgiving when my friend and I went up to visit Alice at the restaurant but Alice doesn't live in the restaurant she lives in the church nearby the restaurant in the bell tower with her husband Ray and Fotch is a dog and living in the bell tower like that they got a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be and having all that room seeing as how they took out all the pews they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time we got up there, we found all the garbage in there, and we decided it'd be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the city dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed on toward the city dump. Well, we got there, and there's a big sign and a chain across the dump saying closed on Thanksgiving, and we had never heard of a dump closed on Thanksgiving before, and with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one. Till we came to a side road, and off the side of the side road was another 15-foot cliff, and at the bottom of the cliff was another pile of garbage, and we decided that one big pile is better than two little piles, and rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. And that's what we did. Drove back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Obi. <laughs> he said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage and just wanted to know if you had any information about it. And I said, yes, sir, Officer Obi, cannot tell a lie. I put that envelope under that garbage. <laughs> After speaking over for about 45 minutes on the telephone, we finally arrived at the truth of the matter and said that we had to go down and pick up the garbage and also had to go down and speak to him at the police officer station. So we got in the red VW microbus with the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction headed on toward the police officer station. Now, friends, there was only one or two things that Obi could have done at the police station, and the first was that he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest on the telephone, which wasn't very likely, and we didn't expect it. Another thing was that he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around the vicinity again which is what we expected. But when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility that we hadn't even counted upon, and we was both immediately arrested, handcuffed. And I said, Obi, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, shut up, kid. Get in the back of the patrol car, and that's what we did. We sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. I want to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this happened here. They got three stop signs, 
Two police officers and one police car But when we got to the scene of the crime There was five police officers and three police cars Being the biggest crime of the last 50 years And everybody wanted to get in the newspaper story about it And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment That they had hanging around the police officer station They was taking plaster tire track footprints Dog smelling prints And they took 27 8 by 10 color glossy photographs With circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back Of each one explaining what each one was To be used as evidence against us Took pictures of the approach, the getaway The northwest corner and southwest corner And that's not to mention the aerial photography After the ordeal we went <laughs> wow. Now, when I saw how long this song was, I, I thought to myself, nah, this must be some kind of mistake. But um, it looks like it's not a mistake. It looks like this song is going to go all the way. Now, I was worried how I was going to cope with that because, you know, if, if you listen to the song and you don't like it, what are you going to do for all that time? But I, I can honestly put my hand on my heart and say, I'm enjoying this man. Uh, this man tells an amazing story. Um, now, it's interesting that this is all happening on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> we don't have Thanksgiving in, in the UK, but, you know, we, we read about you guys. We know how important it is in America, you know. And f for this to be happening on that day to anybody will be your greatest nightmare. Now, so far, what I'm thinking with all, all the commotion going around and all this police band and cars and all these officers at the scene of the so-called crime. I'm thinking maybe the so-called garbage, maybe it's got like a body that was decapitated or something like that inside it. But I'll find out. <laughs> Let's get some more. After the ordeal, we went back to the jail. Obi said he was gonna put us in the cell. Said, kid, I'm gonna put you in the cell. I want your wallet and your belt. And I said, Obi, I can understand you want my wallet so I don't have any money to spend in the cell, but what do you want my belt for? And it said, kid, we don't want any hangings. I said, Obi, did you think I was going to hang myself for littering? <laughs> Obi said he was making sure, and friends Obi was, because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. And he took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll out the roll the toilet paper out the window, slide down the roll and have an escape. Obi was making sure, and it was about four or five hours later. <laughs> but Alice, remember Alice? It's a song about Alice. Alice came by and with a few nasty words to Obi on the side, bailed us out of jail. We went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat and didn't get up until the next morning when we all had to go to court. We walked. At least that is totally right. There was no body inside it. That's just me and my imagination. And Alice actually turned up. I was starting to think there was no Alice. So uh, we've gone past that stage. Now on to the next chapter. Given dinner that couldn't be beat and didn't get up until the next morning when we all had to go to court. We walked in, sat down. Obi came in with a 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back. Each one sat down. Man came in, said, all rise. We all stood up, and Obi stood up with the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures. And the judge walked in, sat down with the CNI dog, and he sat down. We sat down. Obi looked at the CNI dog. And then the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, and looked at the CNI dog. And then the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one and began to cry because Obi came to the realization that it was a typical case of American blind justice and there wasn't nothing he could do about it. And the judge wasn't going to look at the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. And we was fined fifty dollars and had to pick up the garbage in the snow, but that's not what I came to tell you about. Came to talk about the draft. 
You got a building down New York City, it's called Whitehall Street, where you walk in and you get injected, <laughs> inspected, detected, <laughs> infected, neglected, and selected. I went down to get my physical examination one day, and I walked in, I sat down, got good and drunk the night before, so I looked and felt my best when I went in that morning. Cause I wanted to look like the all-American kid from New York City. Man, I wanted, I wanted to feel like the, I wanted to be the all-American kid from New York. And I walked in, sat down, I was hung down, brung down, hung up, and all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things. And I walked in, I sat down, they gave me a piece of paper, said, kid, see the psychiatrist, room 604. And I went up there, I said, shrink, I want to kill. <laughs> I mean, I want, I want to kill, kill. I want, I want to see, I want to see blood and gore and guts and veins in my teeth. Eat dead, burnt bodies. I mean, kill, 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 kill. And I started jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill. And it started jumping up and down with me, and we was both jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill. And the sergeant came over, pinned a medal on me, sent me down the hall, said, you're our boy. And you feel too good about it. Proceeded on down the hall, getting more injections, inspections, detections, neglections, and all kinds of stuff that they was doing to me at the thing there. And I was there for two hours, three hours, four hours. I was there for a long time, going through all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things, and I just having a tough time there and they was inspecting injecting every single part of me and they was leaving no part untouched proceeded through and I went finally came to see the very last man I walked in walked in sat down after a whole big thing there and I walked up and said what do you want he said kid we only got one question have you ever been arrested And I proceeded to tell him the story of Alice's Restaurant Massacre with full orchestration and five-part harmony and stuff like that. And then all the phenomena stopped me right there and said, Kid, did you ever go to court? And I proceeded to tell him the story of the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one that stopped me right there and said, Kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Group W. Now, kid! And I, I walked over to, to the bench there, and there's, there's Group W is where, where they put you. If you may not be moral enough to, to join the army, after committing your special crime, and there was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking people on the bench there. Mother rapers, <laughs> father stabbers, father rapers, father rapers sitting right there on the bench next to me. And one, they was mean and nasty and ugly and horrible and crime fighting guys are sitting there on the bench. And the meanest, ugliest, nastiest one, the meanest father raper of them all, was coming over to me. And he was mean and ugly and nasty and horrible and all kinds of things. And he sat down next to me and said, Kid, what'd you get? I said, I didn't get nothing. I had to pay $50 and pick up the garbage. He said, What were you arrested for, kid? And I said, Littering. And they all moved away from me on the bench there to carry a bone, all kinds of mean, nasty things, till I said, and creating a nuisance. And they all came back, shook my hand, and we had a great time on the bench talking about crime, mother stabbing, father raping, all kinds of groovy things that we was talking about on the bench. And everything was fine, we were smoking cigarettes and all kinds of things until the sergeant came over, had some paper in his hand, held it up, and said, kids, this piece of paper's got 47 words, 37 cents, it's 58 words. We want no details of the crime, time, the crime, and that kind of thing. Got to say, to about the crime, want no rest of the officer's name, and that kind of thing. You got to say in the top for 45 minutes, and nobody understood a word that he said. But we had fun filling out the forms. And now, 
I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to ask if anybody here has ever seen this man play live. And does he actually recite all this lyrics or does he read it? Because I'm thinking to myself, how is he spitting all of this out? But when I listen to the song and I see that there's like an audience there, it sounds like that's what he, what he did. And that is bloody amazing, you know, if that's really what happened, you know. Um, uh, incredible, man. It, it's It's been a fantastic movie so far, because that's what I'm going to call it. It's a movie. <laughs> There's no other word for it. I will be very, very surprised if somebody did it, like do something about this, because this is a script, you know. Uh, it's funny as hell. It's engaging. Um, it's 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 entertaining and i i don't know how all these years nobody will turn this into it should be a sitcom actually but even not a sitcom at least a one-off you know um i don't know if that's the case you guys would tell me but um i love the part where it had a change of pace and it slowed down the guitar was beautiful i like the tone of his voice you know and then as the story went on and the and the uh, the officer came in, it went back to where it was before. I just thought that was genius, man. The way he did that, uh, just fantastic. And also, the way he narrates the story with all kinds of voices as well. Uh, the man is just like incredible. Honestly, I don't know how he can keep this going for eighteen minutes. Ridiculous That's stuff. Not name, man, that's the kind of thing you gotta say and talk for forty-five minutes and nobody understood a word that he said, but. We had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils on the bench there. And I filled out the massacre with the four-part harmony and wrote it down there just like it was. And everything was fine and I put down a pencil and I turned over the piece of paper and, and there, there on the other side, in the middle of the other side, Away from everything else on the other side In parentheses Capital letters Quotated Read the following words Kid You rehabilitated yourself I went over to the sergeant and said Sergeant you've got a a lot of damn gall to ask me if I've rehabilitated myself. I mean, I mean, I mean, I just, I'm sitting here on a bench. I mean, I'm sitting here on the group <laughs> W bench. Because you want to know if I'm moral enough to join the army, burn women, kids, houses, and villages after being a litter bug. He <laughs> looked at me and said, kid. You don't like your kind. And we're gonna send your fingerprints off to Washington and friends. Somewhere in Washington, enshrined in some little folders and studying black and white of my fingerprints. And the only reason I'm singing you the song now is because you may know somebody in a similar situation. Or you may be in a similar situation And if you're in a situation like that There's only one thing you can do Is walk into the shrink wherever you are Just walk in and say shrink You can get anything you want At Alice's restaurant and walk out You know if one person, just one person <laughs> does it They may think he's really sick and they won't take him and if two people, two people do it in harmony, they think they're both faggots and it won't take either of them. <laughs> and if three people do it, three, can you imagine three people walking in, singing a bar, Alice's restaurant, and walking out? They may think it's an organization. And can you, can you imagine 50 people a day? I said 50 people a day walking in, singing a bar, Alice's restaurant, walking out. And friends, they may think it's a movement. And that's what it is. 
the Alice's Restaurant Anti-Massive Creed Movement And all you gotta do to join is to sing it the next time It comes around on the guitar With feeling So we'll wait till it comes around on the guitar here Sing it when you do Here it comes you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. That was horrible. <laughs> Want to end war and stuff, you gotta sing loud. You can put a lot. I've been singing this song now for 25 minutes. I could sing it for another 25 minutes. I'm not proud <laughs> or tired. So we'll wait till it comes around again. And this time with four part harmony and feeling. We're just waiting for it to come around, is what we're doing. All right now. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Accepting Alice. You can get anything you want. At Alice's restaurant, so walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track, and you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Da -da 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 -da. At Alice's I cannot actually believe that that was like 18 minutes and 15 seconds and it was pure gold. <laughs> you can get anything you want at Alice in the Restaurant. <laughs> Fantastic stuff, but I, I, I can't help but wonder when he was talking about the song, you know, becoming a movement if a lot of people sing it, if he was trying to pass a message. Now, the message he was trying to pass, I'm not too sure. Um, it couldn't be about being arrested for for littering x o maybe ah uh, maybe what are you say trying to say there is like some people are arrested for like things that are so um minor and and they get a you know they get a record for it when they want to go for a job it, uh, it now affects them because they get asked questions like um, have you ever been arrested have you ever been to court maybe that's what he's saying i don't know but then again there's the part about him like going into the um going for the draft into the army and he wasn't suitable for that because of the arrest. So um, I'm thinking maybe it could be a, a thing about a protest. Uh, I'm not sure if it's for the army, but I just, I just, I had that thing in my head when he said um, it could be a movement if we all sing this together. I, I think maybe he was trying to pass a message there, but I'm just not sure exactly what the message is. But um, I imagine that um, lots of people, you know, would have played the song around the, uh, you know, around the um, Thanksgiving period, you know, um, especially maybe in restaurants, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised if some restaurants changed their name to Alice's Restaurant. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I, but it was, but it was very, very entertaining. Uh, like I said, I'm not totally sure what the message is about. I think there's something, you know, he was trying to say for the fact that he mentioned that movement thing, he mentioned the army, and there was also the part about, you know, him being asked if he's ever been to court or if he's ever been arrested. So I think maybe, as I said earlier, maybe it's a case of people being arrested for things that are, are so um, flimsy uh, that it shouldn't be. And in the process, they get their lives ruined. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Um, but uh, I look forward to the comment section and you guys will educate me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the uh, 
video a like for me and I thank you for this. If it was your first time here today, welcome on board. Thank you for stopping by. Hope you come back again. My name is Harry. Stay cool, stay safe wherever you are. But most of all, stay beautiful in your heart and soul. I'll see you all next time. Um, I'm off to Alice's now to get some food. <laughs>